Stop thinking about me and start thinking about cute animals and if Narnia and the twin shit. All right, you got it. Chat, behave yourself. If Narnia and the Twilight Zone had a one night stand with enough hallucinogens to make the castle Euphoria flinch, you'd get this island. What happens when you combine snow seasoned beaches, sky molesting reaches, air so clean you'd swear it bleaches, a hippie Satanist wet dream jungle, and animals not even Dr. Seuss on Adderall could come up with? You'd get a place with enough worlds for a Mario side scroller, all packed into an island the size of West Virginia. Tasmania is like the lesser known DLC spin off of Australia. It was originally connected to Australia as part of a polyamorous the land. here make me want to blow up the sun, initiate the second coming of Christ, unleash the old gods upon everyone, and seal y'all's fate in hell. You're just in yapping Minecraft, in my ear. You're literally yapping in my ear right now. Just yap, 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 yap. Thank you for the 100 bits situation known as Gondwana, until they divorced in Tasmania and moved out on its own. But not without attachment issues, since it's only about 150 miles off the mainland. It's fitting you can't spell Taz without mania, because one day in Australia's draft folder will have you seriously reevaluating your sanity. Everything's just backwards. The seasons are flipped, with summer being December to late February, and winter- Why is that weird? It's in the southern hemisphere? I feel like people should- be more clear about this. This is this is in Australia. Of course, the seasons are flipped. Winter being June to September, and if you want to fall without tripping, you'll have to march first. And because of the rain shadow effect in the many mountains of Tasmania, the west half of the island gets five times the rain the east does, making the ah. landscape more bipolar than the animal it's known for. Speak of the devil, we'll get to them, and that wombat is definitely not sleeping. But that's exactly the kind of mind to expect from a land where the toilets flush backwards. In fact, we can start right there. Your introduction to how weird Tasmania can get starts the day you lay cheek on a seat without checking. <laughs> That's an easy way to get your tent. What? That frog's huge! I thought it was a fucking turd! To move by a frog in your toilet. It happens so, Holy so crap. often. That's one of the things Australia. That's kind of cute in a really freaky way. Didn't just accept as a fact of life. It's like a fairy tale frog trying to be a prince, but got confused and went for the it's wrong cute, list. But it honestly but really could be scary. worse. Just think about being the frog. Imagine thinking you're at a water park, but then looking up to an ass hole, dropping bombs like it's Hiroshima. And while getting your bathing suit area caressed by Kermit would surely put a dent in your oh mental, the frog's technically not dangerous and definitely not the worst thing you can find in your bathroom. Imagine dropping chow in the dump. Pepe frogs, but holy shit. Funny, just to see the highly venomous Tasmanian tiger snake just under some TP. And yes, that's actually happened. How about a family of also venomous jack jumper ants in your kitchen? Now, their sting is a jihad to wasp, but only mildly painful in humans, unless you're allergic, in which case they'll tattoo your name on a headstone. It's like I always say, the odds might be low, but they're not zero. In Tasmania, you can have frogs causing clogs, but how about they clog your toilet? Chat, there's so many, or they're so big they clog your toilet. Flog? <laughs> yeah, they flog your toilet. <laughs> what a disaster in Dude, your plastic. So do me a favor real quick. Close your eyes. Go cute. ahead. Do it. Now imagine after a long, stressful day on your feet, you finally get into bed, nestle yourself under the covers. The room is the wow. perfect temperature. It's nice and dark, and slowly drift off into that familiar, inviting world of <laughs> Congrats, you've just had the- Alana, I'm breaking up with you. It's not you, you were poggers. It's me, I'm Omega Lal. I'm sorry if this is pep hands but it has to be done. I've just been feeling pepega and our relationship has been weird champ for months. It's time to end it, no kappa. I hate you so much. I completely forgot about that copy pasta for years. <laughs> experience every Australian has at one point. What the day you find shit? out your roommate's with a brush tail possum. The oh, but possums are kind of cute. The devil Squishmallow. Their personality trait involves breaking into houses and living there rent free, all while serving the soundtrack of Satan getting his prostate punched. And they're a protected species, so they're above the law, which is how they end up in Looney Tunes levels of nonsense. There was one time a brush tail. Oh, he's just trying to swim. Look, he's by the computer. Broke into and trashed some woman's office, but in his defense, he's sorry. This possum broke into a bakery, and I guarantee you sorry. <laughs> Look at his little belly, dude. <laughs> he ate too many danishes. 
is. He's, he's like, take me. I'm good. Um, there is Alana. Dude, I wish. I haven't had a Danish in like years. Sorry is the last thing, well, other than half digested pastries coming out of his mouth. That is so in their cute, defense, man. They are cute. And they their are. vision might be poor, but they'll still peek at you. They're living proof that out of fight or spite, life in Tasmania will you. find a way. Take these rocks, for example. The rocks, called dolerite, were formed by magma getting pushed up through the crust, kind of like wow. a pimple that can extend up to 300 meters above the sea, or just under a thousand feet. You might think nothing could get any use out of Earth's acne, but it's actually a popular rest stop for fur seals, where they can take a break from hunting without also getting packed into a lunchbox by a great nice. white. There's about 50 of these seal service areas across the island, with over 2,000 seals taking advantage, and if you look further out, you'll see they're not the only Very ones. Seals. Humpback whales will travel from their freezing feeding grounds to warmer waters to have calves, and back again, and we used to think they just fasted the entire time for six months. But it turns out, humpbacks will use the waters off Tasmania, like truckers at a diner, as a place to refuel on the way home. The sights don't end once you get on the wow! beach either. If you're lucky, you might catch a leatherback freight train of a turtle heading back to sea. If you're a little less lucky, you'll run into a leopard seal that thought it was too good for directions. Damn you know, it's not until you see these things on land that you- I hate you so much, man. Why are you pacing it again? You realize just how bad penguins got it. It's rare, but every once in a while, the rubber assault sub wanders from Antarctica and ends up in Australia's understudy. You might think they're cute, but let me remind you, they have a confirmed- No, I would not touch a leopard seal. They have such a strong grip strength with their jaw. If you get bit, you're kind of fucked. Human body count. Besides, there's another seal I think you rock with even more. <laughs> okay, this is Neil. Out. Neil the seal. For real. He's a southern Neil elephant seal. seal that's honestly been bullying the small- Holy Look at him! He's as big as half a car! Town of Dun Alley and everyone just accepts it. Cause Neil is the law and the landlord. Elephant seals are notorious for their in intrinsic disdain for human infrastructure. Neil is no different. <laughs> he as doesn't far give a fuck. As far as he's concerned, it's his town. I'll just rent it. All that adds up to a plus size pinniped with an attitude <laughs> problem. An attitude everyone just puts up with because isn't that just the most Australian fing thing you could do? Honestly, spamming copy pastas is the worst form of comedy to exist on this planet. Instead of original jokes, we just have repetitive trash. You're As yapping. a stand up comedian, You're I spend yapping. hours on You're my craft making my sure ear. I make original yep, yep, yep. jokes. I always yep, leave the comedy yep, club yep, with a hot yep. babe. Maybe you copy pasta people can learn something from me. <laughs> Apparently, Neil's still out here being a menace, so if you live in Tasmania, you might just get a visit Neil. from him. Just make sure you have a Neil. sick day in the chamber in case a 1,300-pound sausage decides to park in front of your car. And because Tasmania, you can go from a dive job of the hut on your lawn to the world's smallest penguin. Fairy penguins spend most of their time at sea, but once Fairy a year, they'll return penguin. the land to shack up, get a Ew. nice burrow, and eventually start a family. The penguin dream. It's adorable until they choose to shack up under your house, and you find out what a pint-sized penguin vow renewal Oh, did you guys break it? Did you guys get break my TTS? I think you guys did. Well, sounds like. Yeah, you guys broke it. <laughs> Dude, that is terrifying. I owe you an apology. But since Australia is nothing but a compromise with nature, they get the same diplomatic immunity as Neil. There's even places where you can watch hordes of travel-sized blue penguins coming home oh, after a long day. It's a posse. And if you're really lucky, you'll see what happens when he comes home to his wife getting her plumbing fixed by someone else. Pro tip though, they don't like bright lights, but they're chill around red. I, I don't really know why, but them's the rules. Speaking of rules, you've probably heard of island gigantism, where animals become Ooh. the supersized version of themselves if they've been marooned long enough. Tasmania is no exception. The difference is it led to the biggest tree in the world. This is Eucalyptus regnans. It's one of the few trees with a pyro king, since they can only reproduce I by releasing this music. seeds from Where's pods it from after they've caught on fire. But because of the rain shadow effect and one side of the island getting way Mario? more rain than the other, it also means way less fires. So they kind of just keep growing. Not only can they grow taller than the Statue of Liberty at over 300 feet, Holy many shit. of these trees are well over hundreds of years old since that was the last big fire. Some of the oldest can be 500. That's half a millennium of waiting to spread their seed. Talk about getting pushed to the edge. 
That's how you get these prehistoric, almost alien-looking Jurassic playgrounds dominating the western half of Tasmania. That's these not only make it one of the biggest temperate rainforests in the world, but Tasmania is one of the few places on Earth with a negative carbon footprint. And I believe it. Just looking at this, I could tell that O2 hit different. But also don't forget, the same island that's just over 150 miles from Australia is also a little over 1,500 miles from the frostbitten loins of the land, Antarctica. So technically, it should be no surprise they can also get a good amount of snow, even at the beaches. And maybe it's just me. Y'all can let me know, but I had no idea kangaroos could be around the concept. Oh, it's a wallaby! Oh, that is cute. I've never seen them before. No snow. I did not wallaby think that was something they had to deal with. But yeah, the forests of Tasmania are definitely something out of a fever dream. Stevie Wonder could walk through it and see that. Mostly because you don't even need to see. The soundtrack of the Apple Isle is trippy enough. Like the kookaburra, the bird who carried the careers of sound engineers by being the stock voice of the jungle. And if you've ever watched Flipper or that one time Spongebob tested the FCC, both of those were just a sped up cracked out call of the kookaburra. Also, they're not even native to Tasmania. Isn't there a song that they sing in Australian shit about kookaburras? Kookaburra sitting in the old gum tree. Something, something. Yeah, it's a yapping bird. Yeah, they're cute birds. They were brought in to violate snakes. So were lyrebirds, except they were brought in for their own good. And lyrebirds are able to mimic anything around them, and not just other birds. Maybe I should rebrand. Be a kookaburra VTuber. Okay, there was well, a live bird named Chuck all. who lived in the Adelaide Zoo while a new Biggest exhibit was being built. But guess what he did? <laughs> He's mimicking construction! That's so cool! He's mimicking construction! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, kitty face. Thank you for the three months, man. Dude, the car alarm is the best. A little quick. Wait a minute. And here you That's have a library so and cool, a child. Man. Imagine you hear that in the forest at night. I would actually shit myself. A baby crying in the forest at night. And that's realistic too, it's not fake sounding. And while cosplaying as a chainsaw is cool, the gaslight potential is too outrageous to not be acknowledged. There's other birds too. You probably know this as a carnage happy hell Tweety and a literal black a Air Force. But Tasmanian magpies don't swoop and neither I nor science have any idea why. Also, I don't know what I thought a goth canary sounded like. Oh but my it god, they're so wasn't annoying. This. I'm as confused as you. If you look up <laughs> into the trees, you might find the eye catching Tasmanian Rosella. Oh. Or the tawny frogmouth, which is quite literally the opposite. Truly a Muppet of a bird. But it's the Muppet Tas. <laughs> <laughs> it's Stare! Chat, it's Stare! <laughs> yeah, it is literally Stare! Who you looking at, bitch? <laughs> As mania deserves. <laughs> and then you have the night jar. A little known fact about them is they actually have an even smaller Siamese twin of a bird right by where their beak's supposed to be. And now you'll never be able to unsee it. But that's not even close to the weirdest animal in Tasmania. That would have it's to not... be. Yep, we've entered the platypus portion of the video. <gasps> it would take a whole nother video to describe all the ways this identity crisis of middle figures to something? the natural order. So here are some Toxic highlights. Venomous. They have no nipples, so they sweat milk. They have no. Excuse me, what? They don't have nipples, so they sweat milk. Nah. Nah, you're joking, right? Perry the platypus be sweating milk? No teeth, so they chew with rocks. They have no stomach, it goes straight down their gullet. They swim blind and deaf and use electrical impulses like sharks to find prey because of what course the they do. Fuck? And they have one all-purpose hole that was apparently so fascinating their entire family reunion got named after it. The only animal in their league of eccentricity, yeah weird was just too bland a word for them, is the echidna. It's also a stomachless, egg-laying, milk-sweating, water-loving monotreme. They're a lot like the Greek guard dog Cerberus, but instead of three heads, they have four. Instead of on their shoulder, theirs is south of the border. Echid Ew, man! 
and does have a fire hydrant with four nozzles, and only two can come to a conclusion at a time. Speaking of erupting heads, I'm really about to blow your mind. So you probably know the Disney show Phineas and Ferb, with character Perry the Platypus, created yes. by Dan Povenmire, who uh -huh. came up with a concept for a teal tinted monotreme in 1993. And obviously sure. platypes aren't green in nature, or at least not the live ones. Except yeah. in late 2020, scientists discovered the walking custard factory glows under UV light. Take a wild guess what color. Yeah. Yeah, this goes Green. right at the top. Their quadrupine cousins glow too. In fact, we found out that a lot, if not most, Australian mammals show out under ultraviolet. And yeah. Why? What's the biological purpose? Yeah, if anyone has a reason other than that's just Australia, I would love to hear it. And if you thought it couldn't get weirder, one, you're not giving Tasmania nearly enough credit, and two, there's an animal here that catches bodies and uses light to do it. This underground light show They're is glowies. a cave full of glowworms. Yeah. They're not worms, but the larvae of a type of gnat that uses bioluminescence to lure insects in and a thread hanging from the cave ceiling to trap them. Straight out of the page of the Anglerfish Playbook. Once a victim Whoa. flies too close to the sun, the larva pulls them up to revoke their existence. Sea sparkles are a lot That's less me. dramatic, and these are caused by bioluminescent plankton that, like sketchers, light up when disturbed. Same color as me? Oh, imagine me prancing around in that. That'd be sick. Topic mosh pit is definitely a trippy ride everyone should experience at least once. But yeah, it has I'd nothing it on Aurora time. Australis. Now I could give you the scientific explanation that the lights come from charged particles from the sun hitting atoms in the atmosphere, getting them more riled up than a fan getting an athlete's sweat sleeve, and releasing uh -huh. energy in the form of light. But it's honestly easier to say of course an island stoned off its gourd would have a sky on shrooms. Which is actually close to the other thing Tasmania is famous for. Tasmania. Aurora Borealis? No, Aurora Australialis is when it happens in the South Pole. Yeah, and the North Pole is called Borealis. Ania is the world's leading producer Whoa, of the building blocks for opiates and supplies year? half of Earth's ingredients for this... morphine, fentanyl, and everything Fuck, else in the average it. episode of Euphoria. In 2009, Indians. mysterious crop circles appearing in fields had farmers all forms of befuddled until they Kangaroos. realized it was just wallabies downing poppy plants, getting more cooked than the opposite of Sweeney Todd, and hopping around in circles until eventually. <laughs> You're so stoned off your rocker. Passing out. There were respected members time, of the scientific community that kitchen. said it was aliens. Yeah, Whole titles in a comedy size kangaroo eating so enough good. product to have Horton hearing a who, what, and a how. Cockatoos get lit off it too, but at least with them, they're only Cock. feeding after the seeds and not just getting higher than their wings can take them. But Cock. wallabies walling out is a problem for one very crucial reason. Aurora Borealis. At this time of year. At this time of day. In this, in this part, part of the, of country, the country. Localized entirely, entirely within, within your kitchen. kitchen. Yes. May I see it? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tasmania is also the roadkill capital of the world. It's said that 32 auto-assisted census subtractions occur every hour. And since wombats are walking cinder blocks with a rear end of retribution, they have the potential to drive a literal wedge between your car and the road. Oh, are we getting ads again? Oh, shit. Seymour, the house is on fire! <laughs> no, mother, that's just Aurora Borealis! <laughs> Tell me when the ads are over. Tell me. Because I can't see when they're over. I can only see when they happen. Steamed hams. Dude, I love The Simpsons. I really did. Yeah. <laughs> it's over? Okay. Leading the world in furry four-wheeled flatlines is bad for them, but great for one animal. This wombat's in a nightmare, but he's not dreaming. Cause Tasmanian devils will live- Alana, I'm trying to watch the video, please stop pausing it. Mods, break his legs. Twist his nuts off. Make little fucking sausages out of them. Live up to their name by feeding on carcasses from the inside <laughs> out. To the point where they'll have a food Rod coma all bowels deep in the dead Yeah, that's decay. right. And at the size of a small dog, devils have the most damaging bite relative to body size of yeah! any mammal. Clearly, Brush Tales took voice coaching from them, since they literally got their name from settlers touching down on Tasmania and hearing what a devil dinner party sounds like. But they're pretty well known, unlike their close cousin, the Quoll. 
I don't know how they fly Whoa. under the radar because- What is that, like a koala that's swole? Where devils are mostly scavengers, yeah. quolls mostly eat what they kill. And considering there have been over 100 cases of quolls feeding on human remains, 111 to be exact, that devil Holy title looking shit. real fraudulent. Quolls also have an alternate black morph. But look at, look at how like cute they are. They look like a little, you know, like little stuffed animal, little, little spots. Like what the fuck do you need those for? Like what do you, what do you need, what do you need the spots for? Proving that any animal with an Oreo colorway lives. Dude, it looks like it's painted on. It's on even timing. Because not real, man. I swear. Is their own kind. They're so bite happy that it's a big reason for the spread of devil facial tumor disease. And considering biting's basically foreplay to them, Excuse it's like me, an what? STD that's done an absolute number on their population. And there's a real fear it can cause them to go the way of the thylacine. The thylacine's been called the Tasmanian. Tasmanian tiger or the Tasmanian wolf, but it's actually the uh -huh. other dominant predatory marsupial and one of the few times an animal got gaslit into extinction. Bounties were put on their heads and not only were people saying thylacines were marking 50,000 sheep a year in a place that didn't have more than 40k max, later evidence says that their jaws might have been too weak to even murk a sheep. To be fair, uh -huh. if that's true, nature set them up. And in 1936, the last known thylacine named Benjamin died in the Hobart Zoo. Almost Aww. fittingly enough after being locked out of his sleeping area and the bipolar Tasman weather finished him off. But from everything Aww. we've learned about Tasmania, you knew they weren't going to let that sad. slide. Since 2005, devil diehards have been creating insurance populations of those without the disease and even established an inaugural class of imps on the nearby Maria Island. There have also been efforts That's to create cool. a vaccine to save the mascot of Tassie, and as of 2023, it's officially been approved for testing. And after a 3,000-year devil absence, Tasmanian devils were born on the Australian mainland after 44 of them were drafted in 2011 to a breeding program for the Aussie Ark Devil Project, which Aww. definitely sounds like a cult. You even got dogs working <laughs> as wingmen for the devils by smelling when a female's ready to mate, date, and procreate so they can get her set up with a male. Since then, about 500 Joes have joined the Devil nice. database, and they might not be the only ones making a comeback. There's a good number of people that believe that the thylacine is still out there, and with a lot of the Tasman wilderness being straight up inaccessible to most people, maybe the Tiger of Tasmania is still out there in the shadows. Maybe. And honestly, staying low-key is probably their best move. Holy That's shit. really Tasmania as a whole. How such a medley of mind -fuckery and generational balderdash can be so underrated is beyond me. But if I've learned anything about Tasmanians, that's exactly how they want it. But that's gonna do it for this video that was actually inspired by this animation by Felix Colgrave. Aww. I'm not gonna spoil too much, but it basically shows you what a day in the Tasman wilderness might look like. I'm gonna put a link Smoking in the description. Weed. Definitely go check that out. Friendly reminder that Getting I am high. selling calendars. Link will also be down below. Drink water, hug your parents. If you see a thylacine for their own good, no you didn't. And I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Oh, Yay, Devil's gonna shit. Take a lint. Look at him go! He's fast. Look at him. Come on, Lynn. He stole something. You little bastard. Does he give him some on Lynn? He stole it. Seventy-eight percent. He stole his chocolate. You mongrel. You mongrel. <laughs> Dude, that is so cute. Mommy. Piss, piss, piss. Shit. Piss, 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 piss. Fuck, 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 fuck,